It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here today. I'm going to be taking a look at Code Names Pictures, the follow up to the wildly popular Code Names, the word game, party game, sort of. Um, in which, you know, players are going to split into the teams and try to figure out what the clues are for your own team before the other side does it. This is pretty much the same thing, but as you might guess from the title, with pictures instead of words in the original code names. So, how does this one hold up to the original? Is it uh, interesting? Will it make that transition well? Let me give you a quick look at how this works, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I thought of this one and what I thought of it compared to the original. At the beginning of the game, we are going to split up all the players among two groups, and we are going to pick one from each uh, team to be the clue giver. And then all the other ones are trying to guess what the clues are. We're going to set up the board here, five by four, with random images. As you can see, there are quite a few of them, and all of these are actually double-sided. So there are tons of images. And then you are going to flip over one of these cards, put it on the little stand, allow both clue givers to see the card but not their respective teams. Okay, so no one's gonna see this, but the two players that are giving those clues, I'm just gonna tip it over for now. Um, let's do this, like that. And then you are ready to begin. You are, the card is going to tell you which team goes first because the uh, they have an extra clue that they must give and the little lights on the sides there tell you what team um, is going to start. Again, it's slightly harder for them. So we're gonna give them this card so that they know they have to get through eight instead of seven for the other team. What are you trying to do? Well, very simple. You are trying to give your team, the clue giver is, clues so that they'll guess the ones you want them to guess, the ones highlighted here in your color, and not the other ones. And once you have them all, uh, well, then you win the game. This is gonna give me a little glare here. I'm gonna put it right there. Uh, yeah, that kind of works. All right, so for example, it would be the red team to go first, and uh, they would take a look at the cards out here. You can give any clue you want. It's a one-word clue followed by a number. The number is how many things you are attempting to tie together, which is, you know, part of the clue. So I could say something like shark two. And then the players could look out here and they could go, uh, they could discuss among themselves what they think it might be, and then they might point at one, like say that one. Once they touch it, I will then cover it up with the correct uh, type of card out here. If they got it right, I put one of our own on there. That one is correct. They have found one of the clues, one of the spies, and they can take another uh, guess because I said two. And in fact, they can guess uh, more than that if they, if they wanted to. So once they touch it, I say that. If it had been a wrong uh, guess, let's say for some reason they guessed this one, then I would put the corresponding type, in this case it's a neutral, and the round is over for us. It is the other team's turn to give a clue, try to get the, uh, their cards guessed, okay? If they, if the team of the, the clue giver points at a card that belongs to the other team, well then we give them their point, and again our turn is over, and there is even one card that you definitely don't want them to guess, this one here. Because if they ever guess that card, we've lost the game automatically. All right? So, back to my clue, Shark 2. They point at this one. I say, yep, you got it. And then let's say they point at this one. That is also correct. We're going to give them that one as well. And then it is the other teams go. And they could take a look at what their uh, clues are here based, again, on where the dots are in their color as to what clues they need to give and they could give it a try. Um, you could even go with something as simple as block one. Well, it's probably that one with the building blocks, the little Legos. Yeah, you're right. Give it to them. They don't want to guess anything else. Fine. It is then the back to the other team. Your team is always allowed to stop guessing early, or if you say, for example, if I said that shark two, they could make up to one more than the number I said, so they could make up to three guesses. That's to account for 
previous clues that they busted on, basically. But that's pretty much the game. You continue doing that until your team has gotten all the ones you need to get. Whoever gets all their clues first is the winner of Codenames Pictures. First of all, let me say, even though it's no secret, that I'm not really a huge fan of the original Codenames. It's, it's not much of a party game, and if it is, it's the kind of quote-unquote party game that someone with a big brain wants to bring out to flaunt their big braininess, you know? It's got that feeling to it. It's like, uh, it, it comes across a little elitist it, among people who would, would not normally play party games. That's, again, obviously my biased observations. Codenames Pictures, I think, takes the whole system and really moves it towards a more party, uh, welcoming vibe. It's a simpler game to get into. It's less intimidating. I think more people can play this. For one thing, it's language independent. So right there, it gets a leg up on the original. And it just has a, a better vibe to it. The board is smaller, so it's a little easier to cross those clues a little bit. The whole thing is is much more clever. I mean, there is a reason why almost immediately after Codenames came out, people were playing Codenames with things like Dixit cards, right? From that game Dixit, which is kind of what this is. Because that's inviting, because it's interesting, because it's kind of abstract and more party-ish, you know, versus flaunting your vocabulary a little bit. So, I would definitely say if you enjoy code names, you're gonna dig this game. And if you were so so on code names, if you were a little bit put off or you find it not to be particularly inviting, whatever, I would still recommend this one. This is the one that for me finally gets that that gem of a system, right? The, the concept, the way in which the game works, and wraps it around a good game. And that's right here, Codenames Pictures. So definitely would recommend this one over the original, uh, again, for finds of the original or not. It's one that, while it's still not the best game of the year or anything like that, it's a lot more approachable. I think I'm going to be bringing this one with me to a few parties and the like. So check it out, Codenames Pictures, thumbs up from me. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.